It's finally over after four years the city of Rancho Palos Verdes and Trump National Golf Club have settled a major lawsuit. Liz Brown Swanson joins us from the RPV City Council meeting with more on the story. Liz. Maria, I'm here at Hess Park where the city council is getting ready to meet. Certainly all of the council members are pleased that the city of RPV and Trump National have been able to settle the lawsuit that had been pending for four years. I caught up with the city attorney for the details. I'm being joined now by the city attorney, Carolyn. Certainly after four years of having this lawsuit pending, um, you must be thrilled as well as the council to have had this finally settled. Yes, everyone's very pleased. This is a very positive development. The council's been working very hard with the Trump organization over the last few years to improve the working relationship. And I think it's come to that point now where both parties were able to dismiss their claims and walk away from the litigation. And it's a real win-win for everyone. So when you say dismiss, dismiss the claims, what does this mean now for the city? And in terms of that means that the case is over with. Uh, Mr. Trump dismissed his claims. The city dismissed its cross complaint. Litigation's completely over with. No one had to pay anything. Um, it was basically just everyone realized that uh, we are all reaching a very positive uh, relationship going forward. Excellent. Now, leading up to the settlement, I know the city council took action and they extended um, the two-year agreement. Explain what that was all about as well. The the. Uh, the project had a development agreement that was on it when it was originally approved back in 1991, and it's been extended a number of times, and it just got extended again for two more years, which in fact was actually required by state law. So that was another one of these routine steps that has further enabled both the city and the Trump Organization to have a very positive relationship. As a city attorney that worked on this for four years, anything you want to add that I'm not asking that you think is important that residents understand, and just, again about the fact that now the city and Trumps are certainly moving in the right direction? Yes, it's it's a very positive development and again no money was paid the city paid no money mr trump didn't pay any money everyone just basically shook hands and walked away and it was a very positive positive development well certainly after talking with the city attorney maria you can tell there is a sense of relief here that this lawsuit has been settled and both sides seem to agree that the city and trump national are now moving ahead in a positive direction back to you maria and there's more exciting news coming from Trump's as they will rename Ocean Trails Drive to Trump National Drive. The RPV City Council voted 4-1 to one in favor of the name change. We caught up with Trump General Manager Lily Amini and several city council members who tell us more. This has uh, been an ongoing issue since about 2006. I think was the first time that, that Trump requested that the, that the street be renamed. Um, the prior council uh, really was not inclined to, to do that. It was a lot of negotiation. There was a lot of hostility back at that point in time. Um, but uh, there, there have been some overtures by Trump that they'd like to rename that street. And uh, Mayor Pro Tem Campbell brought it up as an item, I don't know, 30 days or so ago. And uh, it was brought before the council. And we thought with the, the um, uh, relationship uh, on the track that it's going that this was a positive thing and I personally thought that it was the appropriate thing to do just because uh, you pretty much go to any resort out there that's they usually have the street named after the resort as you approach something like that. First of all really 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 excited um, it's gonna be Trump National Drive I think it's been a long time coming I think it just makes sense um, and we are so excited about it because you know usually on the phone when you're talking to guests it's Ocean Trails Drive and then they keep thinking that this is restaurants called Ocean Trails it's a lot of confusion on our end of things but um, I hope that that you know, this will make it easier for our guests. Um, there's a lot of people that call and get lost, and you know, there's a map quest, uh, inconsistency, all these things, and they're they're driving up the hill and they don't know where to go, and um, but they're happy, and and as long as they're happy, we're happy as well. It just makes sense for them as well, and I can't even imagine what they've kind of gone through with the people who kind of get lost around this area. We want to thank you everybody for their support, especially the people that came out to talk um, about the street naming you know, at the city council meeting last Tuesday. So we're so, so excited and we are very, very thankful to everybody and the council. The sign is expected to be installed sometime in October and RPV TV will be there to cover all the fanfare. And this month marks the 55th annual Portuguese Bend National Horse Show. The show supports Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. Now, over the years, the show has raised nearly $11 million, and the event continues to bring out members of our community and the surrounding areas to support the charity.
It was a day filled with artists and their masterpieces as local artists opened up their homes for the annual studio tour sponsored by the Artist Studio Gallery. We caught up with artist Don Crocker who talks about how he finds his creative inspiration. Always a fun-filled day, and if you would like to find your inner artist or shop for some very cool art like I do, the Artist Studio Gallery is always a great place to start. For more information, you can go to their website at theartist-studio-pvac.com. And when we come back, what you can do to prepare for Carmageddon 2. And Mark J. Dotty reminds us how to dispose of old documents in the Green Beat. Stay tuned. When you're driving, distractions can cause injury and death. Drivers who text while operating a vehicle are 23 times more likely to cause an accident. In 2009, over 25,000 tickets were written for cell phone violations. Remember, in the state of California, talking on a phone without a hands-free device is against the law. Loud music is also distracting. When you drive, keep your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel. There are three main types of distractions. Visual, taking your eyes off the road, manual, taking your hands off the wheel, and cognitive, taking your mind off what you're doing. Keep your eyes on the road and we all stay safe. Having an emergency plan in place before an emergency is crucial for your family. It's impossible to know what kind of emergency we will be facing or when it will happen. We know that fires, earthquakes, and power outages are a part of life in Southern California. The City of Rancho Palos Verdes Emergency Preparedness Committee recommends that you plan for the worst. Visit the city's website or come to the emergency preparedness meeting and learn how you and your family can be prepared. Do you have a seven-day supply of non-perishable food and water on hand? Do you have copies of your tax returns, insurance policies, and other important documents? Do you have an extra supply of prescription medication? The City of Rancho Palos Verdes Emergency Preparedness Committee 
recommends that you take an all hazards approach to emergency planning. Go to www.palasverdes.com slash RPV to find out more and create your emergency plan today. There's a lot to enjoy in RPV. Just watch Armchair Traveler on RPV TV. We may not get to Europe, but by golly, if you come with me, John Clayton, you'll find out just how much there is to see in RPV every single day. I say, that sounds super. Yes, it's back. Carmageddon 2 is upon us. The closure of the 405 freeway will begin on Friday, September 28th and continue until Monday morning, October 1st. Now, Caltrans would like to remind everyone to stay off the freeways and enjoy your own communities over that weekend to avoid a traffic nightmare. And here at RPV TV, we will help you out by airing an Armchair Traveler Weekend Marathon. Here's John Clayton with more. So you're sitting at home doing nothing and you're thinking to yourself maybe I should get out and go on the freeway wait a minute wait a minute no 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 the 405 is full of Carmageddon you should stay home and watch Armchair Travelers the Marathon there are some neat wonderful things to do right here in Palos Verdes just take a look at this Armchair Traveler hosted by John Clayton takes us traveling in and around the South Bay Places to go, places to see, catch them right here on the Armchair Traveler. Thanks, John. Looking forward to wall-to-wall -wall armchair travelers. Well, it's time to mark your calendars. On October 20th, EDCO will sponsor a paper shredding day for RPV residents. Our Green Beat reporter, Mark J. Dotty, gives us all the details. We're here with Lauren Ramazzani, who is the recycling coordinator. Yes for the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. And tell me about the event coming up on October... 20th. On Saturday, October 20th, EDCO and the city of Rancho Palos Verdes are sponsoring a free document shredding day on Saturday, October 20th from 9 a.m. to noon. And it's open to all RPV residents. This is as part of the EDCO services to the city, so we're not paying any extra uh, for the services, EDCO's uh, picking up the tab. Uh, the event is going to be um, at RPV City Hall, 30940 Hawthorne Boulevard. There will be special traffic instructions and um, people, please follow all the safety, um, traffic safety items that are placed for this special event. Um, EDCO's website is www.rpvrecycles.com. There's a S, rpvrecycles.com, and their EDCO's phone number is 310-540-2977. There's some additional services that are going to be offered that day, Mark. Uh, the EDCO is going to be uh, collecting electronics waste, TVs, monitors, cell phones, uh, old fax machines, uh, and also there will be a free mulch giveaway. Okay, well, so <laughs> what do people need to bring to get mulch? Um, it's a self-serve, uh, self-haul um, event. They need to bring their trash cans or the uh, uh, hefty yard bags. They need to bring their own shovel, they need gloves. They need to bring their own gloves. So pretty much the mulch is there. There's going to be a big heap of mulch, and um, whoever's interested, they can fill up to three cans of mulch and uh, haul it away. So there isn't going to be somebody... <laughs> <laughs> nobody's <laughs> shoveling for no, you? nobody's shoveling, so they do okay. it. Uh, the only recommendation we have is if you are going to take it on a, a pickup, uh, you need to have a tarp or something so the mulch doesn't fly away. Okay. And uh, you might have noticed that we have these boxes here. So um, what I brought is I have some 1998 tax return and tax information and some receipts. And then here are my... Um, 2000, uh, 2008, I think, uh, returns, which I, I think I'm done with and I might shred. Is that is that what I want to bring that day? Yes. Uh, uh, items that you can bring are whatever somebody wants to make sure that uh, is safely disposed of. It's tax returns, bank statements, mortgage uh, applications, refinances, credit card statements, um, anything, you know, paycheck stubs, anything that has your social security or address or any other uh, information that you want to make sure it's uh, properly disposed and there would be no chance of identity theft. 
now a new business has opened its doors in Golden Cove Plaza. It's called Lockout Pros. It's the only locksmith on the hill. Now we caught up with Bart and Dina Fors to tell us the key to their success. We knew the community needed it here. Okay. And um, so you know, we knew it would be a good location and be convenient for everybody. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and from here we're able to be anywhere on the hill in a short amount of time when somebody's locked out or needs their house rekeyed or something and we're, we're able to just be here for them. Yeah, we're the only one on the hill and it's like our pros, you know, it's our world headquarters, our first store here. <laughs> yes, uh, we did um, um, for LA County Sheriff and Orange County Sheriff, mostly sheriff evictions. Okay. And um, she, she got tired of me. She, she, she was afraid of me getting hurt and, and uh, so we, we just wanted a hometown locksmith what, what do people especially residents what do they need the most most of them are usually locked out okay either something wrong with something wrong with their door like this morning a lady came in she couldn't get in so we usually just you know since we're right here he usually just follow them you know to their residence and you know help them out and they're like you know two customers come in and they like you know the keys especially ball and keys yes. so that's one of my big favorites you know with the customers the ball and keys little by little um, all the, the community has been finding out we're here to get keys cut, and, uh, and it's, it's just convenient for them. And when we come back, a classic story right here on the Hill and some very good news for the Los Angeles Dodgers and their fans. Don't go away. There's a lot to enjoy in RPV. Just watch Armchair Traveler on RPV TV. We may not get to Europe, but by golly, if you come with me, John Clayton, you'll find out just how much there is to see in RPV every single day. I say, that sounds super. Having an emergency plan in place before an emergency is crucial for your family. It's impossible to know what kind of emergency we will be facing or when it will happen. We know that fires, earthquakes, and power outages are a part of life in Southern California. The City of Rancho Palos Verdes Emergency Preparedness Committee recommends that you plan for the worst. Visit the City's website or come to the Emergency Preparedness Meeting and learn how you and your family can be prepared. Do you have a seven-day supply of non-perishable food and water on hand? Do you have copies of your tax returns, insurance policies, and other important documents? Do you have an extra supply of prescription medication? The City of Rancho Palos Verdes Emergency Preparedness Committee recommends that you take an all-hazards approach to emergency planning. Go to www.palosverdes.com rpv to find out more and create your emergency plan today. It's time for sports. Now, every year at Dodger Stadium, we wait to hear from the great Vin Scully to see if he'll be returning for yet another season. And when Vin speaks, we all listen. You know, one of the reasons I asked to stay on for another year was the fact that I just didn't have it in my heart to say goodbye. And I don't mean just goodbye to the players. Uh, I really meant saying goodbye to all the people that I meet. Uh, whether it's when I get off, I mentioned this the other day, uh, I get off and say hello to the elevator operator. I walk in the press box, James and Robert are there. I walk into the press room and uh, David the chef and Marie and Martina, the girls who work the tables. And then all my friends at the press. Uh, and I have a lot of them, I really have. And then I go out into the press box and there are more people that I know. Then I go into the booth and there's our crew from Fox. And I kept thinking, are you ready to say goodbye to all those people? Who's going to fill that gap? And it's a big gap. Believe me, I look forward to that as much as the game. Just uh, being with people, good people. So uh, I couldn't say goodbye. Uh, I, I don't know when I will, but I couldn't do it for this year. And the fans are the same. If I, if I see some fans, one of the nicest uh, residuals of this job is to have people say, you know, when I hear your voice, I think of uh, summer afternoons with my dad painting the garage or fishing or whatever, or in the evening barbecuing. It's nice to be a bridge. 
Uh, I really enjoy that very much. So uh, as long as I can be of a little service, as long as I can still visit with all the people I hold dearly, uh, why would I walk away? So uh, we'll try to see if we can hang on at least for another year. And finally, what goes better with a cup of coffee on a Saturday morning? Well, classic cars, of course. The first Saturday of every month, the Peninsula Seniors get together and they show off their vintage automobiles and spend some time talking shop. This is a free event that's fun for all ages. Here's more. We began copying cars about two and a half years ago. Uh, Paul Ginsberg uh, and I were talking about it at one of the uh, board meetings and uh, the idea just really took off uh, uh, between Betty and Paul and uh, a few of us, uh, we started with uh, probably 35 cars and now we're uh, approaching 150 cars each uh, weekend. And what's amazing is the cars are every type. Uh, and it's whatever anyone wants to bring that they think that uh, people would be interested in. And by word of mouth and email and flyers, it built up to this where we're getting between maybe 120 to 150 cars uh, each time. We were, when I was on the board, we were having some initial discussions about having some new activities, activities for younger seniors. And I, I've been a car hobbyist my whole life. There are a lot of car activities like this. I, I didn't invent the idea of uh, early, early morning car get together, but I suggested let's do one of these for Peninsula seniors, especially because when I go to car events, most of the people have gray hair. It's a uh, plenty of seniors enjoy the car hobby. So I suggested it. Gerald Wheaton, who was also on the board, uh, said he, he thinks it's a good idea. He'd like to help me do it. And we, we barely knew each other. And, and so that was this is today is our 29th version of uh, or yeah, 29th time we've done coffee and cars. The event here is sponsored by Peninsula Seniors. However, we have a multi generation that comes. We had the first. Uh, event. There was a little guy, he had to be about six, he was going around asking people to pop the hood. So um, we have people that bring cars, we have car enthusiasts, everybody's welcome and everybody enjoys the cars. And the people, I mean, it's amazing. There are people from all backgrounds. This is my 1933 Ford two-door sedan, uh, chopped hot rod. As a car designer, this is one of my favorite cars. The lines of this car, the grille, uh, the fender shape, everything about this car was one of my favorite cars. This is one of the few cars I own that I didn't actually build, but this is my beater. I drive this thing everywhere, and I don't care if it gets rock chips or anything. So it's just a car that I can put the key in and drive anywhere. Usually I bring one of my other cars to this show. I've got a 1932 Nash, and I've got a 38 Ford Cab Over, and a couple other cars that I'm messing with. So I'm always messing with cars. And my original job, uh, for I worked at Ford for a few years, but after that I became a designer at Mattel, and I did the Hot Wheel cars. So I'm one of the few guys here that uh, has their, their own car on their hat. So I always made a Hot Wheel out of every car I had, and this is one of them. It's a 1970 uh, Ford Boss 302 Mustang. I found the car on a website called the Boss 302 Registry. Uh, it was advertised by one of the registry members. And uh, just by circumstance, I, uh, he had moved from uh, Southern California up to uh, Spokane, Washington, and that's how I found the car. Yeah, when I bought the car, I had it shipped back because it was snowing up in Spokane, and I happened to be sitting in a uh, 757 with uh, Larry Wood, who uh, he and his wife both worked at Ford Styling, and Larry happened to be the Ford designer who designed the, uh, the hood scoop for the, uh, the shaker hood. Okay, it's always the first Saturday of every month. Uh, the time is officially from 7.30 to 9, and everybody enjoys himself. It's low-key. Uh, nobody's doing burnouts, nobody's blasted music, uh, and at the end of the day, the end of the event, when all the cars are gone, I look around, there's not a scrap of paper, not a cup of coffee on the ground. Uh, everybody's respectful and the, the place is clean. We hold this at Peninsula Center between Starbucks and Burger King. So, uh, you know, it, everyone can uh, drift over to Starbucks or Burger King, whatever their choice, get their coffee and walk through, uh, enjoy the people and enjoy the cars. And those Peninsula seniors sure know how to have a good time. And that will do it for Peninsula Beat. For all of us here at RPV TV, make it a great day.